Hi friends, this is Pastor Kevin of Faith Lutheran Church, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you to our online worship service for Sunday, January 7th. This week, we're celebrating the baptism of our Lord. The introduction for this service, it points out that in our text, we are reminded that our recreation in baptism is an image of the Genesis creation where the Spirit of God moved over the waters. Both Mark's gospel in the story in Acts make clear that it is the Spirit's movement that distinguishes Jesus' baptism from John's. The Spirit has come upon us as upon Jesus and the Ephesians, calling us God's beloved children and setting us on Jesus' mission to recreate the world in the image of God's vision of justice and peace. As we gather to worship God together and, and give God the praise and the glory for God's many gifts, we're strengthened to go out as the Spirit leads us to live the ongoing life of Christ for the sake of the world. This morning, we begin our worship as we confess our sins and receive the assurance of God's gracious mercy. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. The grace that is Christ's gift to us, the love of God and the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace be with you all. We join together now in the prayer of the day. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading assigned for this Sunday is from the book of Genesis. We're going to read from the first chapter, the very first five verses of the Bible. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. 
and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm assigned for this morning is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord burst forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessing of peace. Here ends the reading from the Psalms. The second lesson assigned for this morning is from the book of Acts. We're in the 19th chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So friends, today we commemorate the baptism of Jesus. And I sometimes wonder if we do this now, meaning this quickly after we've celebrated his birth, 
because we've grown accustomed to thinking about baptism as something that we do to infants, and, and therefore it makes sense to us that we think of his baptism as falling shortly after his birth. But let's be clear. Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan when he was probably about 30 years old, and his baptism has been a theological puzzler ever since. I mean, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But we've been taught that Jesus was perfectly holy and therefore without sin. So why would he need to repent and what would he need to be forgiven from? Well, just to be brief, most folks figure that his willingness to join those of us who truly need to repent and seek God's forgiveness through baptism was just an act of solidarity with us. And I don't know, but I figure that if that's the case, then that's a pretty powerful lesson for us in how we ought to be willing to stand in solidarity with those in need today, just as he has stood with us. And that's actually the main point of this sermon, even though I intend now to stop this sermon, turn around and come back at that point from a very different direction. You see, the thing that really stands out to me from our lessons today is the way Paul reacted to those early Christians in Ephesus, those who didn't recognize the difference between John's baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and what it means to be baptized into Christ Jesus. And I think many of us still have trouble recognizing the difference. You see, most of us think of baptism as kind of a a hoop that we have to jump through in order to make sure God will love us and forgive us from our sinfulness. For most of us, baptism is just this ritual that we pass through, this formulaic rite in which some pudgy guy with a white robe waves his hands over us and splashes a few drops of water on our forehead and and says the magic words so that God will allow us through the pearly gates when we die. But friends, you, you surely see that that is the very essence of John's baptism. Oh, you know, perhaps we've changed the words a bit from what John used to say. Certainly, we've made sure to add the name of our Lord along with the Father and the Holy Spirit to our formula, but still, we pretty much think of it as a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So perhaps we need to ponder Paul's teaching in Acts just as much as those early believers in Ephesus. Perhaps we need to repent in terms of opening our hearts and our minds to the new reality that Jesus revealed among us in order to better understand what it really means to be baptized into Christ Jesus. And our first hints are the teachings of John the Baptist himself about Jesus and the baptism that he would bring. John tells us that while he was baptizing with water, Jesus would baptize us with the Spirit and fire. And that implies two things to me. First, that Jesus' baptism would be driven by God's holy energy, that Spirit that inspires us and guides us, encourages us, and fills us with a passion to live and love as He has lived and loved. And the idea of baptizing us with fire implies to me that his baptism is one that may lead us not away from, but into and through the toughest parts of life. And I think that those ideas are underscored and emphasized in passages in which Jesus talks about baptism in his own way and in his own life. In one passage found in Luke, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he tells them, I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what stress I am under until it is completed. And of course, in that context, he's talking to them about his own impending crucifixion. And then, now in the Gospel of Matthew, we have the story of his disciples, James and John, who come to him asking to have the honor of being seated in the places of honor when his new kingdom is established. And Jesus' response is, 
You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. So here as well, the baptism that Jesus is speaking of is his own approaching betrayal, his rejection by the people, his unjust arrest and torture and death. That is apparently for him the baptism that awaits him. And I think a strong argument could be made that that is also the baptism that he is calling us into. Oh, maybe not that we'd face the exact same difficulties and sacrifices that he was called to make, but that our baptism would be not so much a, a once and for all time ritual that we pass through, but a continuous life journey in which we enter into the pains and troubles of others for the glory of God and for the sake of those God once created and eternally continues to love and care for. Now, please understand this well. I do not mean in any way to denigrate the sacrament of baptism that we as Lutheran Christians have offered through the ages. I think that there's a place for that, a, a reason for that, a need for that, and an eternal salvation that is passed on to us through that. But that's not because it's a magical rite that seals us from the, the evil eye or any of the other dangers of this world. Instead, the ritual itself gives us the confidence that our God has reached out to us and touched us with God's love and promises just as surely as that water touched us on the day of our baptism. And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing indeed. But we who wish to mature in Christ Jesus as we follow him in this life, we must be as open to God's teaching as those young believers were in Ephesus when Paul sought to offer them new insights into their life of faith in the footsteps of Christ. For us, baptism into Christ is not a once and done event. It's a way of life in which we follow his lead into even the murkiest places of life. For us, our baptism is not about insulating us from the dangers and pains of life, but instead our baptism prepares us for and invites us into those difficult spots empowered by the promises of God and the faith that we hold that God's love is limitless, God's power is absolute, and God's spirit is with us always. So rather than stealing ourselves to the troubles of this world and boasting that God has set us apart for a higher and holier purpose, we open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the troubles around us. And in deep and humble prayer, we ask the Holy Spirit to kindle a passion in us for those that God would have us reach out to. And when our hearts are aflame for those in difficult situations, we ask ourselves how Christ Jesus our Lord would have us live for them today. Shall we lift them in prayer? Send them a card, give them a call, visit them in their hospital beds or in their homes, or shall we share our resources with them, offer them words of encouragement or, or just be with them in their time of need? Shall we allow the compassion of the Spirit to batter down the walls of our previously unseen prejudice and bias that we have so long held against certain others that kept us from seeing them as fully human and fully worthy of God's love? Shall we accept the scorn of our neighbors as we stand with the poor, the lonely, the rejected, the despised, frightened, and fearful in order to bring them the peace of the Lord? I think part of the beauty of our baptism into our Lord when seen in this way is that not every such baptism is the same ritual for each person, 
but that it is, in fact, a baptism uniquely formed for us that allows the gifts the Spirit has graced us with to be used for the glory of our Lord as we have died with him in the waters of baptism, only to rise in his image, to live his life in this life and into the life to come. Amen. Now our worship continues as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Inspire wisdom and a spirit of proclamation in your church, God of forgiveness. Uplift leaders to share the truth of your word in community. Encourage us to live into the promises of baptism, working for justice, and peace in all the world. God of grace, receive our prayer. Renew your creation, God of thunder and mighty waters. Restore the rivers in which your children are baptized. May fields flourish and grow. 
Summon the stewards and caretakers of the land to cherish your good works. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give strength to your leaders, God who is present in every country and community. Raise up leaders committed to equity and healing. Grant them discernment and compassion as they lead in love. God of grace, receive our prayer. Protect and cherish the most vulnerable among us, God of strength. Accompany those separated from family or hurting from broken relationships. Shelter our unhoused neighbors and any experiencing poverty. Protect those incarcerated in prisons and detention centers. Care for the sick and suffering. This morning we especially raise to you Ben, Inez, Phyllis, Mary, Cheryl, Bishop Satterley, Maya, Ron, John, Cecilia, Jacob, Kathy, Brody, Kim, Denny, Jim, Jerry, Don, Marianne, Claudia, Nancy, Jeanette, Brett, Christine, Ron, Mike, Kathy, Myrtle, William, and all those who live or work at the Samaritas Lodge, Woods, and Terraces. God of grace, receive our prayer. Encourage this congregation, God who calls and sends disciples. Guide us in accompanying, learning from, and serving our neighbors on the margins, following the example of Jesus. God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting the assurance of the Holy Spirit, we remember all who have died and rest in God's care. Give hope to those who grieve, even as we rest in your eternal promise of resurrection. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Now we join together in the offertory prayer. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In and through your word and presence, you have opened heaven to us. Meet us in our worship, our devotion, our prayer and praise, and in our daily lives and relationships, that all people may receive what you seek to offer. As we follow your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. Guided by the light of Christ, let us pray his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
giver of every gift. Christ has given us even his own body as our food, that we may serve as Christ's body in our world. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Now we receive the blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells within you, bless you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ I want to be with Jesus When we have run with patience the race We shall know the joy of Jesus In him there is no darkness at all The night and the day are both alike the lamb is the light of the city of god shine in my heart lord jesus shine in my heart lord jesus shine in our hearts lord jesus